handicapped young people who are being encouraged to confront their distressing afflictions. which makes many of us feel uncomfortable. Mental handicap and illness. Yet one in six of us will need professional help for a mental health problem at some time during our lives. For years, successive governments have been trying to decide how we as a society should deal with mentally ill people. For most patients, there used to be only one answer, the asylum. In the last few years, we've begun to accept we shouldn't just lock the mentally ill away and forget about them, that they too have a right to live as normal a life as possible in the community. Well, the government seemed to publish a white paper aimed at streamlining this process. But will enough money be available to help all those who could benefit? Tony Baker has met a group of parents who, on their own initiative, have pioneered a new type of care for their handicapped children. To any casual observer, a young man walking his dog in a suburb of Newcastle would present nothing other than a perfectly normal sight. But Glyn Lejet is afflicted by autism, one of the most complex forms of mental handicap. Glyn lives at home with his mother and stepfather, with whom, because of his handicap, he can't communicate. The compensation, however, is that Glyn, who is 29, is cared for in a warm family environment. Glyn, therefore, enjoys physical comforts, something which not all autistic young people share. For Glenn Adams, home became an air raid shelter. It's warm and comfortable, especially for George at the The shelter on the edge of a farmer's field on the outskirts of Darlington was the bolt hole for a boy who, at the age of six, was put into care by parents who could no longer cope. They haven't seen him since. His life became one of institutions, children's homes, special schools, units for disturbed teenagers. And when he ran away, as he often did, this is where he ran. All human beings should be afforded dignity, whoever they are and whatever their condition. And Article 26 of the Human Rights Act does say that every human being should be helped to reach his or her full potential. And I also think that the way we treat our handicapped is one degree of the civilization of a community. And I feel too that ours has a very long way to go. A very long way. Now, Glenn Adams lives here. He's been found a place in this new community home for autistic young people in a converted vicarage at Seaham in County Durham. It's the first of its kind in the northeast and actually in the way in which this refuge has been established unique in Britain. It was set up by a group of parents with autistic young people including Fiona Leget earlier this year. They were all worried that after school years there was nowhere else for their children to go. The bitter irony is that while Glenn Adams has been found a place here though Glyn Leget hasn't. While his parents are still prepared to go on looking after him at home, no money can be found for a place at Seam. Glyn's mother is left with a wish. Seam can give him a residential place, it can give him tuition, it can encourage him out of this autistic state, it can realise his potential. Glyn is normally intelligent and his potential is great, but he's never going to realise that potential if he remains at home because I'm not trained to deal with an autistic person. I'm just a mother. How many calls are we going to do, you think? Two calls. Two calls. Yeah. Mm. A leather jacket and, uh, <laughs> and a denim. 
Glenn Adams was welcomed into the old vicarage six months ago. He was given his own room, one which he's been decorating recently with Leslie Howarth, one member of staff with whom he struck up a particular friendship. In Glenn's case, Siam, which has eight other residents, is all about the very patient task of developing relationships, giving him a secure family base from which he can venture out into the world. But that is only part of what the old vicarage is achieving caring for nine very different residents afflicted with a range of disabilities because of their autism. Any outsider such as me coming into the old vicarage can't fail to be impressed by what's going on here. I actually started off not being very sure what autism is. There's the film Rain Man, the idea that despite their difficulties, autistic people often display a peculiar kind of genius. But in most cases, that simply isn't true. It affects 80,000 people in Britain. There's no known cause, no cure. Most harrowing of all for the parents is the fact that, unlike other forms of mental handicap, there's not even the consolation of affection. From birth, autists are obsessive, indifferent to others, cold. He's a lovely boy. He's our dearly beloved son. But he, he really crippled us as a family. Caring for him, the stress was enormous on all of us. Um, and this is why a place like this is such a miracle to me. Mm. It's, it's the answer to my prayers. And it's my dream come true. And I'd love to think that all autistic people in the world could have this sort of care mm. for their handicapped sons or daughters. Mm. How difficult is it that autistic children and autistic adults seem not to respond to other people and to you as parents. That's the worst. It's, it's the worst, absolutely the worst. Difference. You don't get the father-son relationship. Parent-child relationship, you don't get the effect. It's, uh, it's terrible. I mean, it's, it's only now that I can maybe steal a kiss from my dad, kiss him on the cheek and etc. And now he has a kid and come and kiss the top of my head, which is wonderful. But that's only in the last two or three years, and he's 26 years old. It's the most precious thing ever, isn't it? Turn child. And you don't have that. Because that's part of the problem, you see. You only, Marty will never know me as a father or as any meaningful person. I think as soon as Jamie was diagnosed, when he was five, um, we saw the next 70 years of our life, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, it, stretching out forever. There's no, we didn't know what would happen, uncertainties and so on. And now Jamie's here, we can see he's happy, we can hear him being happy, and in a way a normal person perhaps won't realise what a weight that is off your mind. You have peace of mind that you can uh, get on with life as before. Um, it's, it's a tremendous thing, a tremendous feeling of relief. Uh, we're very we know that we're very fortunate that Jamie is here and as the other parents here do, we're very, very privileged and fortunate. And we see that we've got to continue with this work for others. Can you right up there? The Can centre's manager them? is Christine Smith. Good Her philosophy that. has been to create an informal family atmosphere within which yeah. programmes can be followed to help the residents with their range of disabilities. I think that's probably the most difficult thing to understand about autism, that its effects. Um, highly intelligent people, as well as its effects severely subnormal. But yes, here we have we have uh, different levels of handicap, and so we have programmes designed to cope at each level, and individual programmes in social skills, language, um, social training. Now, Jamie, we're going to have to go to the post office. Find the post box. Where's the post office? Look. Which one is the post office? New point. There's the post box. So we're going to post our letter. Let's go and have a look at it. Over here. Brenda. 
and say hello. <laughs> May I have a stamp, please? May I have a stamp, please? Thank you. Good lad. Right. Put the penny in your pocket and I'll take your stamp. <laughs> Give your stamp a lick. Put it on the corner there. Good. Press. Good lad. Let's put it in the box outside. Please. And then mum and dad will get that first thing in the morning. Make them very happy. Good luck. Right, Peter. Can we sing this song? I know a boy and he's called Grace and he likes to drink alcohol. <laughs> what else do you like to drink, Peter? What else do you like to drink? And he likes to drink cups of tea. He likes to be out. And he likes to sing songs, songs and he tries yes. to be quiet, and he tries to Please. be quiet Please. and calm. Very, Very good, good. lovely. Do you like watching the sea coming in like this? I stand very closely, right in that spot down there. I just stand on the rocks and watch it come as well. Why do you like it? Why do I like it? Because it's more in check, like floods and whatever. And even when I'm on the pier as well, I just watch it bash right over the top. What do you think about when you sit here looking out to sea? Think about nothing. We trouble, we take our troubles away. Why did you do that? That's what the seaside meant, meant before. Glenn, far more able yeah, than the fun other fun. residents at Seaham, doesn't need such intensive programmer as the others within the old vicarage. Yeah, yeah. He enjoys his trips out to the sea or to indulge his main obsession. Same. When these, when I used to watch them pass, station that's coming through, something like Fade Trent and most like Intercity 125. We have to let him go and try for himself. With support, if he needs it. With support, we have to guess when he needs it, because sometimes he can't ask for it. So we have to guess that he needs someone with him and needs some support. And sometimes when um, you drop him off somewhere and you're driving away and he looks very lonely, just got to let him do it, just to let him try and so. He'd always be there for him when he needs to. You can find his way around the entire country. If the train didn't turn up or was late, he could make day tours and go via the station. To We went all the way to Birmingham. On on one. On the train. Yeah. Because there's both of my interests in favourite places. Hmm. So I can try out some of these places by myself. Did you like Birmingham? Yeah. What did you do there? Well, I didn't do much this time because it was... Everywhere was shut. And it wasn't too packed. Well, we're watching television. Listening to pop red cards and pop tapes, so and so on. So that's all I do. I just do here. Glyn Leggett's life centres on his room in the family home. I know. I'm, I'm got. I'm got church. I've got church friends. I got church. I've got church friends. What sort of people do you see when you go there? Friends of the family or? There's, there's, this one just, 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 just went to a family, that's all I see you on. Do you like going to church, sir? I do, yes. I go to Eaton Baptist Church. 
Yeah, I've got plenty of got plenty of friends at church. That hymns. Yeah, I've got I drive hymns, yeah. The hymns are about the same every week. Now yeah, this conversation that. took place on only the second occasion we've met. A chat with a stranger. But his autism means that this is the kind of openness he can't share with those closest to him. He won't hold a conversation at all with me. The only time he ever speaks at home is if he wants something and I don't provide it. It's almost like being used as a tool. I do find it hard. Um, I try to be understanding because I don't really know the reason for this. I just feel intuitively that Glyn does love me. In fact, I could almost say I know that he loves me. Uh, for instance, on Mothering Sunday in church, the minister put a question to the children and he asked them something about their mothers. And Glyn shouted from the gallery, I love my mother, which was an astonishing thing to happen. I cried. I just broke down and cried. I love my mother. Uh, and yet, sometimes he appears so cold and indifferent that it's hard for me to accept that he does, that he is fond of me. I just have to know inside that he is and accept. Uh, the mute condition. It's the absolute dedication of loving parents which has made see impossible. An example which other groups of parents throughout the country are hoping to follow. Two fathers have travelled from Leicestershire to listen and learn from Seam's experience. Well, I suppose we were a group of parents who uh, uh, realised that we needed something, perhaps selfishly, that we needed something for our offspring, mm. and we knew there were many others around about who needed the same sort of as we did. So we got together, decided, had a look around, as you're doing, at different sort of facilities that existed, um, and then decided what we wanted. Our mm -hmm. uh, requirements were so diverse that it came down to the whole spectrum of facilities, really. Mm -hmm. And we need something for the less capable and something for the very capable. And that's what our society aims to set up. And the First, the CM parents secured a grant from the National Autistic Society to appoint a project manager for a year. The vicarage was bought through the Durham Miners Housing Association with a private mortgage. In low-cost County Durham, they bought the property for £79,000. The actual funding, we, we're talking about uh, something like six to eight people. Um, we believe that it's going to cost us something like two hundred thousand pounds as a minimum to actually buy that property. Having bought their building, the CM parents needed to pay the mortgage and running costs, including fifteen full-time staff, to enable them to provide one-to-one -one care for each of the residents twenty-four hours a day. This means it costs four hundred and forty pounds a week for each resident, but no single government department will pay such an amount. CM gets the money by playing the system. £165 a week from the Department of Social Security for looking after adults, the rest from the Department of Health or from local authorities' social services departments, depending where residents come from. But this is a situation in which only the most persistent, only the most articulate, get results. Shouldn't be charity and volunteers and people like us. There should be more money put into this by the government to make sure people get the, what suits them individually. The, uh, I think it's the 1986 Disabled Persons Act provided for um, individual assessment for all people, disabled people. So you go through all these processes and at the end of it they've got nothing to offer because they don't make the right provision for people. Um, and if you're not articulate, as you said, pushy, middle class probably, you don't get anywhere. But even for some of those involved in setting up SEAM, personal circumstances haven't eased. Mr and Mrs Leggett have to continue looking after Glynn because Newcastle City Council says it can't afford to give them a grant for a place at SEAM. The council says it has at least 500 other similar deserving cases and the budget simply won't stretch. Now, to give you some idea of how difficult all this is, Fiona Legette is only one of 50 people with names on a waiting list for SEAM. That is a figure after just six months, and it's bound to grow. Parents want SEAM because of what it can achieve. It helps their children to overcome, gradually, the worst aspects of their handicap. On the wards of large mental institutions, even at home, they could vegetate. Here, they're not allowed to. 
They're encouraged to confront their handicap, especially the worst part of all, shunning human contact. Beside us, Peter. Oh, well done, Peter. Oh, Peter, that's very good. You've come to join us. That's lovely. Can you sit up? Yeah. That's good. And you're looking. That, that definitely deserves this sweet. Have a sweet. Because this is a nice, happy time, isn't it? Claire, you can have a sweet too. Yeah, please. We're sitting together on the floor, aren't we? Yes, Jenny, you can have a sweet. Good boy, are you looking? Yeah, good lad. The aim of, this, oh of a session such as that is to make the residents more comfortable with themselves and more comfortable being in the close proximity to other people. And autism does affect people in that way. It makes it, it um, the pressure of being near other people, having to make um, conversation, having to be responsive to other people is very difficult. And we set up situations such as that as a basic training in, in first, the first stages of communication. And we go right from square one, which is eye contact. And autistic people find it very difficult to actually make that eye-to-eye -eye contact that is, that is the basis of, of, of human communication. Oh, Jamie! Oh, <laughs> it's lovely to see you. Jamie, you touch Claire. Good. You're touching Claire, good boy. Can you now touch Steve? Where's Steve? Thank you. Where's Stephen? There he is. Can you touch Stephen? Yes. Good boy. You can. Chris is going to hold. Good. What are you going to Claire, what are you going to say to Robert? No. Robert, would you? No. Which one would you like, Rob? No. Would you like a Rolo? No, 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 no. No, I think. So what do you say to Claire? No, mm. All right. Yeah. Robert doesn't want to sleep, Claire. That's okay. So it is quite, quite difficult for an autistic person, first of all, to sit close to someone else. It's difficult for them to look at someone else, and it's difficult for them to actually um, communicate in any way. Would you like to sing a song for us? Where I swallow, I'm pink and green, Oh, you know, I'm blue. 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 Oh, Come and join us. No. Come and have one of these three. No. Yes, I, I think Rob should join us. Come on, Robert. Come and just join us. Because everyone else has had a very good, a very good time. The process is not without its risks and can seem very distressing. Come on, Robert. Here we go. Rob's going to join us in the group. No. Yeah, come on. do like it. That's very good. No. Robert is a very, yeah. very good lad. Well done. Here he is. But for Robert, whose whole life has been one of withdrawal, a firm but gentle easing into contact with the others breaks the barrier he's put up. Hello, Robert. Oh, it's nice to have you here. It's really good. Peter? I was trying to achieve success for Robert, because while Robert was on the edge of that group, he was failing. And he knew it. Um, the fact that the others had managed, and it's very difficult for them to do that. They, they, they've done that very well to actually come close and to stay close and to tolerate another person near them. And Rob knew that that was the object of the session, partly. And he also knew that he was left out in the cold. But his problems would not allow Robert to. Um, comfortably join that group. He was too worried, he was too anxious, he could not allow himself to succeed. Therefore, to prevent Robert from failing, it's essential that we put in some support. 
and that the port was in the form of actually physically lifting Rob into a situation where I could say to him, well done, you've done it. You did so well. You did so well. Can I sing that one? Mm -hmm. Robert, good night, Robert. Robert, good night. Good night, Robert. Tonight, Robert. I'll see you in my dreams. Now, he showed signs of distress at, at being in the group of cooperation. Um, but he would have been more distressed and it would have been less of, of um, an achievement for him to have finished that session without actually getting to the point where that, that he knew I was asking of him. City daydreams. <clears throat> if I win the tour, I'll do this and that. I'll find an ocean going beyond. It. it was never that. I don't know. I had daft daydreams. If I win the tour, a million times, it is true, I shall give a lot to our own society. As long as they sign a piece of paper saying that look after him while he dies, yeah. and I'll just go stupid and walk away. That's mm -hmm. how important it is. It's now 28 years since Enoch Powell, as health minister in the Macmillan government, first raised the idea of getting more people out of mental hospitals and into communities like this one. And Norman Howe is still saying that he needs to win the pools to achieve all that's required. The latest initiative is the Griffiths Report, which suggested targeting resources through local authorities who already face stark choices about matching money to need. So, as the system changes, will enough money come through, not only for those people here, but also for those who wait? For Glenn Adams, the question may be academic. A case conference at Seam is delighted with his progress. Soon there may be a second home, a smaller one for the most able young autists, where they can enjoy more independence. I don't mind living in another place, like moving out. Mm. Would you like to live in a place on your own? No. Do you feel that it would be um, nice to have people like Leslie who might see you around? Yeah. But for Glyn Leggett, the question certainly isn't academic. Because unless the money comes through that so far has been denied, his future will centre on this room, with his parents, until they die. And that's all for North Report tonight. Next week we look at the North-North Divide, the gap between two communities at opposite ends of the economic scale. In one, they queue for food handouts, and the other, they talk of their paradise on Earth. That's in North Report next Friday. Good night. <laughs> An article based on next week's North Report can be found in the new edition of Radio Times, on sale now. Over on BBC One in a quarter of an hour, Annika Rice faces another awesome task to be completed within 24 hours. 
On BBC Two now, public eye on the treatment of sex offenders in and out of jail. The program.